feel the power. Welcome to a Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the ever-increasing world feast. I'm excited to welcome you, friends and family, right here on Facebook, YouTube, and all our social media handles. Abel Damina is my name. Listen, the truth of the word of God is, when God's word is preached and taught, God's power to save is made available. Brother Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. I'm honored to serve you grace today, to bring you clarity of teaching from the word of God. Invite a friend, a loved one, create watch parties, tag people, because the word is going to come very hot and powerful today. You know, there's a mandate of God on my life to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. It is with that mandate in mind that this message is coming to you right now. It will change your life forever. However, remember the scripture tells us the time shall come when they shall not endure sound doctrine. The Greek word hugaino wholesome doctrine. There's an endurance required. So as you listen, please painstakingly and patiently listen to the teaching of God's word. Don't listen with a critical mind. Listen with a mind to learn. You know, Jesus said, learn of me for I am meek and lowly of heart and you shall find rest. So there's a meekness required. Brother James says, with meekness, receive the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. There's a meekness required. And there's endurance required where sound doctrine is concerned. So you want to patiently follow the teachings. Most of my teachings are in a series. So get ready to follow. And if there's anything you don't understand, be patient. The teachings will continue to explain themselves until you come to a place of understanding and clarity in the knowledge of Christ. One more thing to say with you today. If you're in an area where there's no Bible teaching church, where the message of Christ like this is preached, you can start one or you can join any of our campuses. Our campuses are extension houses of our local church where brethren come together and they are fed, they are taught, they take responsibility, they pray together, they reach out to the people in their community with the truth of God's word. Our campuses are lighthouses in nations and cities and communities where believers come together and they are taught the word of God by myself. And I'm excited if you want to be a part of what we're doing around your community or you want to start one. All you need to do is shoot me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. And we shall guide you on what to do to either begin one campus or join another. It's not good for you to be in isolation. The Bible says, do not dismiss the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. In prophecy, the word of God tells us that God will bring the solitary into families. You are a member of a family and there is no family that does not have a gathering. Our gathering is our assemblage to be taught, to be equipped, and to become responsible for other people's growth. It's so important, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you today. Lastly, there's a plethora of books I have written that addresses so many issues of the Christian faith. They're all on the screen. Look at this. Today, you can order for a book or two or all the set by shooting an email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Including today's message, you can order for the CD or the DVD. The entire essence is to nourish you, enrich you, and equip you with robust understanding of your relationship with Almighty God. I'm excited to be able to serve you. Fasting your seatbelts. Let me take you right now into a gospel adventure, into the service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. We're looking at the revelation of Jesus. The revelation of Jesus. I'm reading from Revelation chapter 1 verse number 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Like I always say, that is the key to the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So everything we'll be looking at in the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. Now look at verse 4 to 6. That's instructive. That's doctrine. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is. 
and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne verse 5 and from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood now take note the Jesus he is about to unveil here is not the incarnate Christ it's not Jesus of Nazareth it's not Jesus the son of Mary he already emphatically told you that the Jesus is going to unveil here is the first begotten of the dead what which means this book of Revelation rallies around the risen Lord all right of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth now watch what his resurrection has done to us who hath loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood now take note of the tenses he hath loved us and washed us from our sins so we are loved by him and as a result of his sacrificial work which was demonstrated in his love we are washed. God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet seen as Christ died for us. So the demonstration of God's love is that he died so we can be washed. Our wash or our washing or him washing or purifying us came out as a result of him loving us, his sacrificial walk in his own blood. Next verse, verse 6. And hath as a result of his sacrificial walk so if you pay attention to the tenses he's dealing with the past tense of god's word or the finished work of christ hath made us kings and priests unto god and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen now we have already established that in studying the book of revelation you know uh, the moment we begin to see the visions the utterances and the interaction with angels because it's a book of metaphors, symbols, imageries, and is, is a book of visions, all right? So the moment we begin to see visions, utterances, interactions with angels contradicting the written world, we are supposed to discard them. Anything that contradicts the written world that comes from visions, revelations, in fact, let me add this one because this is what many of us experience sometimes. Dreams, visions, revelations, dreams, or trans in the form of prophecy, or trans, dreams, visions that contradict the written world. Now, if you watch, this is instructive. Before John began to talk about all the interactions with the angels and all that, he first of all established the position of the believer. You are loved you are washed you are made a king and a priest unto our god very important now paul's words to the church in galatia is very instructive galatians chapter 1 verse 6 to 8 i marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of christ unto another gospel next verse which is not another but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of christ next verse but though we or an angel that's instructive though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed let him be accursed even if we or an angel from heaven that's instructive even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached let him be a cause now pay attention to the greek word removed i marvel that you are so soon removed the greek word for removed it metathemai it implies to change sides you have changed sides it implies to take away from a fixed position to change sides or to take away from a fixed position all right removed all right now so brother paul taught believers to be steadfast in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free and be not entangled again. You are removed. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You are so soon removed from him 
that called you from a fixed position you are removed meaning you have left where you're supposed to be and the next thing you will find yourself in is the yoke of bondage the yoke of bondage once you leave the finished work of christ and you begin to romance another gospel and you begin to double around another gospel the resultant effect is bondage the yoke of bondage be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage didn't brother peter call the law of moses bondage he said why put on them a, a yoke a, a yoke which neither we nor our fathers could bear bondage so brother paul says to the church in galatia the same church where he said they have been removed he said be not be not be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage stand fast in the liberty wherewith christ has made you free notice the sentences hath made us hath made us that means that the tenses of the gospel of christ or the tenses of the grace of god in christ is what god has done in christ what god has done in christ those are the tenses of the gospel of grace those are the tenses of the gospel of christ what god has done in christ another gospel will try to change it subtly another gospel will try to change it softly christ plus circumcision christ plus obedience christ plus you know um dressing christ plus and plus seed sowing christ plus seed sowing or christ plus tithe that's another gospel anything that takes that adds to what christ has done is another gospel it's a pseudo gospel it's a pseudo gospel somebody called my attention yesterday to a video that's trending on social media where a particular man of god says even if god appears to him and tells him that seed sowing doesn't work he will tell god forget it seed sowing works now that's 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 the height of uh, mammonism is there anything like mammonism yes that's the height of mammonism we are even god cannot talk to you we are even god cannot tell you it is not right that's the height of mammonism and what he's trying to say is that the word of god supports seed sowing but i've never seen that in the word of god the only thing the word of god calls seed in the bible is something you plant in a farmland it's something you plant in a farmland our givings are not seeds our giving is generosity our giving is liberality our giving is in response we respond to what god has done it is not our giving that gets god to do something we give in response to what god has done if you're following say i hear you so that's why the tenses are important that you are removed from him that has called you to the grace of christ now when he called you to the grace of christ what has he done in the grace of christ he hath washed us he hath loved us he hath made us he has made us he's not going to make us he hath made us so another gospel will softly add something to christ the word was taken from the the, the greek word heteros heteros it implies strange different or altered another strange different or altered the word heteros is spelled as h-e-t-e-r-o-s heteros it implies a strange a different or a gospel that has altered the original it's a strange gospel or it's an alteration gospel all right it's an alteration all right then he now said let that man be accursed let him be accursed the greek word for accursed is anathema 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 implies to ban let him be banned or let him be excommunicated or let him be separated from once a man begins to peddle another gospel let him be excommunicated let him be banned let him be separated from now watch this remember brother paul said though we are an angel from heaven that means a legitimate minister can teach another gospel 
Though we are an angel from heaven. Alright? So, which means, Brother Paul was saying, even we, there is a tendency we may preach another gospel. But, you have to know which is the gospel to be able to distinguish it from another gospel. Let him be excommunicated. Let people stay away from him. Whether he's a man of God or an angel from heaven. The problem with people is people are too, people are in, too into hero worship. Hero worship. So once a man of God says something, even if it contradicts the word of God, you are willing to follow the man of God as against the judgment of God's word. So your loyalty is not to Christ after all. Your loyalty is to a man. But you are only loyal to a man as long as he's loyal to Christ. You follow me as I follow Christ. If I'm not following Christ, why are you following me? I don't care how long that man has been preaching the gospel. I don't care how long. He said, no, we are an angel from heaven. That's instructive. That's instructive. That a legitimate minister can suddenly begin to preach another gospel. Some do it out of the love of money. Love for money. And if you pay attention carefully, one of the areas where the word of God wants ministers of the gospel is to be careful with money. Brother Paul told Timothy, the love of money is the root of all evil. He was not talking to Christians. He was talking to a minister of the gospel. The book of Timothy was written by Paul to Timothy, instructing Timothy, who was his protege in the ministry. And he says to him, all man of God, flee these things. Flee these things. Flee the love of money. Because so many things that have messed up the gospel in this country is as a result of the love of money. Preachers are creating all manner of things to be able to get money into their hands. And so, because of that, the gospel is adulterated. The gospel is corrupted. The gospel is perverted. Am I communicating at all? The gospel is perverted. So, though we are an angel from heaven. Now, that's instructive. An angel from heaven. Let them be banned, excommunicated, or separated from. So any message or teaching or vision or dreams or interaction with angels that twist the facts of the gospel of Christ. Any message, any vision, any dream, any song, message, vision, dream, song, prophecy, revelation that twists the facts of the gospel. That twists the facts of the gospel. Now, for you to know which message is twisting the facts of the gospel, you must know what the gospel is and what are the facts of the gospel. First Corinthians 15, 3, that Christ died. That's the first fact of the gospel. That Christ died, not that Christ will die. Honey, remember you had the vision and the guy in shining apparel came to you and he said to her, I am your savior. I will die for you. And he was looking with all the things you see, read in the book of Revelation was upon this guy. And he appeared to mama in a, in a vision. And he said to her, I am Jesus Christ, your savior. I will die for you. And because she understands doctrine in the vision, she said to him, but the Bible says Jesus has already died. So the guy now began to squeeze into an ugly monster and his true color came out. When you confront falsehood and another gospel with the true gospel, the true gospel exposes another gospel. Because the true gospel is light. The true gospel is light. This guy became a monster and left. Now, if she didn't have doctrine, if she didn't have sound knowledge of the scriptures, she would have knelt down for that, that demonic object to oppress her. And she would have gone into a moment of oppression because of an encounter from a vision. So that's why brother Paul says, though we are an angel from heaven. So whether it's a vision, a dream, a song, a dream, a vision, a song, you must not tolerate it. You must not be decent about it. You must confront it frontally. It doesn't matter who is peddling it. Any message that twists the facts of the gospel. Christ died, first fact. Second fact, that he was buried. Third fact, that he rose again, not he will rise. He rose again according to the scriptures. Those are the facts of the gospel. That's why the gospel of Christ or the gospel of grace thrives or functions in 
past tense or if you note the tenses they are tenses that that operate within the confines of what christ has done he has loved us he has washed us he has made us kings and priests unto our god if he's getting clear shout a powerful amen now second corinthians 11 4 for if he that cometh preach it preach it another jesus preach it tenses another jesus whom we have not preached whom we have not preached or if you receive another spirit which you have not received or another gospel which you have not accepted take note of the tenses the only way you can know another gospel from the gospel of christ is in the tenses that's why knowledge is important any gospel that is promising you a future in god is another gospel is another gospel heaven at last is another gospel it's another gospel because the tenses of god's word are always past that's what christ has done another gospel another jesus another spirit which you have not received which we have not preached which you have not received which we have not preached the word preached is the greek word keruso k-e-r-u-s-s-o keruso it implies to announce or publish to announce or publish and then he now says he says you might as well bear with them in galatians 1 6 7 8 and 9 you might as well bear with them i need to quickly clarify that word bear with them because in english bear with them means you should put up with them you should tolerate them all right is that english bear with them is to tolerate them but in the greek that's why i said the bible is not an english book so you should be careful when you see english words in the greek you might as well bear with them is from translated from a compound greek word anakamai anakamai a-n-a-c-h-a-m-a-i it implies to hold oneself up against you hold yourself up against them it's not to tolerate them it's not to tolerate them if you're reading with english mind you will think the bible means we should tolerate them eh, in the greek it actually means to hold yourself up against them that is you gather momentum and push them off you resist them you confront them frontally because it's so subtle if you stay around it for some time it you will slip into it another gospel is so subtle that if you stay around it for some time and you start managing and you start tolerating it will start influencing you that's why somebody who says, well, I follow Dr. Damina on TV. I follow Dr. Damina on Facebook and YouTube. You know, but I still go to my former church. Even though I know they don't have epignosis, but I'm still going there. How do you eat from the table of the Lord and at the same time eat from the table of demons? Are you provoking the Lord to jealousy? You cannot eat from the table of the Lord and eat from the table of demons because what you are hearing outside the grace of God and the message of Christ and epignosis is another gospel. It is called the doctrine of demons. And you cannot eat from the table of the finished work of Christ and at the same time be eating from the table where the, the doctrine of demons is communicating. Are you provoking the Lord to jealousy? You can't hear what I preach and go and hear the opposite at the same time. Say, well, um, I've been in that church for too long. I have built friendship and relationships. It is very difficult for me to leave. Then you don't know what you're looking for. Are you in church for friends or you're in church for Christ? Where's your loyalty? Where's your loyalty? Brother Paul say, even we, if we preach another gospel, you don't owe us loyalty no you don't you don't owe me loyalty if i come into this house and i begin to peddle another gospel you don't owe me loyalty yes you will pray for me but you don't have to stay under me to pray for me you quit and save your soul you save your soul from adulteration are you with me
me here. Yeah, that's why I'm teaching you. So nobody will take advantage of you. And you know, I will not because I have sense. Yes, I also I love Jesus. Yes, sir. And I say, well, you know, I, I'm still going to my former church because I might be the savior. Do, don't worry. Don't worry. When they save you from what you know, when they have saved you out of Christ, you understand? Church, are you hearing me? You're so quiet this morning. Are you sure you're okay? When they save you out of Christ, your eye will clear. That is if it clears. Because if the eye clear, you will go back. You can't eat from the table of God and eat from the table of demons. You can't be double dealing. You can't. You're too small to have two masters. You cannot serve two masters. You got to make up your mind where you want to stay. Say, I hear you. I'm not hearing you. Say, I hear you. You got to make up your mind where you want to stay. You can't be eating from two tables. Brother Paul in Corinthians says, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, this is second. He said, do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Eating from two tables? It means you have not understood what we're preaching. Because if you understand what we're preaching, you will have zero tolerance for anything that tries to corrupt or pervert the gospel. He said, let him be excommunicated. Let him be, be cut off. Let him be separated from. Burn him. See, I hear you. So now you know that there's another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit. Another spirit. So we were dealing with you, might as well bear with them. It means to hold up yourself against them. It implies that there will be a stern opposition against the preaching and teaching and rejection of another gospel. There must be a stern opposition. We must resist another spirit with everything we have. And we must resist another gospel. So take note. The written word, therefore, the gospel is the revelation. The revelation. The written word. The gospel is the revelation. Or the written word remains the basis. The written word remains the basis. The revelation, the gospel of Christ, remains the basis upon which a vision, utterance, interaction with angels will be accepted or refused interaction with angels visions even dreams will be either accepted or refused the gospel the, go the word of god is the basis so all through teachings all through teachings must affirm the past tense of his work all through teachings must affirm the past tense of jesus's work and it is upon his finished work that all things derive its legitimacy from. Everything else in Christianity derives its legitimacy from the finished work of Christ. Very important. That's why you will see words like Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. Who gave himself? Underline the word gave if your book and Bible is yours. Who gave? Underline the word gave. We're dealing with the tenses of the gospel. Who gave, all right, underline the word gave himself for our sins from him that called, from him that called you into, 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 from him that called you into the grace of Christ. The word called, circle it or underline the word called, gave, called. The next one, Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ Nevertheless I live Crucified Crucified Circular underline The word crucified I am crucified with Christ Nevertheless I live L-I-V-E Circular underline Crucified live Another scripture Galatians chapter 3 verse 2 The same church in Galatia that's why I'm taking the tenses from there where they were removed. The same church. 
This only will I learn of you. Received. Received. Second the word received. Received ye the spirit. Received ye the spirit. Then another scripture, Galatians 3, 3. Having begun, underline the word begun. Having begun in the spirit. Having begun in the spirit. Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Having begun in the spirit. Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Then Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. God has sent forth. God hath, hath sent underline the word or circle the word had sent had sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts had sent all right then look at galatians 5 23 meekness temperance against such there is no law 24 and they that are christ have crucified circle the word crucified the flesh with the affections and loss so watch the tenses gave called crucified received begun has sent have crucified all are past things that's the gospel have made us have washed us have loved us teaching good if you're following say i hear you all right gave crucified called received begun has sent have crucified so Paul said, another gospel that you have not received. If your Bible was mine, I will circle the word received in Galatians 1 9. Another gospel that you have not received. Received. Revelation 1 5 to 6. Washed, loved, made us. So, in describing what God did in Christ for us, and also the new birth, he uses those tenses. In essence, therefore, any vision, are you following? Any vision or every vision, every book, every movie, movie, every testimony, it looks like it is acted from the Bible. That's why it's another gospel. It looks like. It looks like. It's another shade. It's an addition to what Christ has done. Are you following? The humanistic gospel. The gospel of morality. The gospel of character modification. is another gospel. Motivation and speaking in the church is another gospel. If you're a motivational speaker, you can do it outside from believers. Don't motivate believers. We are naturally motivated. Metula dagaga. That's motivation. What do motivation, what does it do? It, it motivates people. It kind, of, it, 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 kind, it kind of builds people to trust themselves. Motivation puts the spotlight on me i'm loaded i can and if you think you can you can i have it i got it you know that's motivation but in christ i don't have what i have is what he gave me that's why it's not the gospel it's not, motivation is trying to show you what you can do but i'm dead I'm crucified. Nevertheless, I live. It is not I, but Christ. So the gospel reveals to you what Christ has made out of you. Not what Christ will make out of you. What Christ has made out of you. Teaching good this morning. If you're catching my flow, shout, I hear you. So any vision or every vision, book, movie, testimony doctrine interaction with angels that lacks the all-important permanent assurance all-important permanent assurance of the eternal nature of christ's work it lacks the all-important 
permanent assurance of the eternal nature of Christ's work can safely be termed another gospel. Safely. It can be termed another gospel. Therefore, in studying the book of Revelation, which has a heavy involvement of angels, heavy, that book, heavy involvement of angels, imageries, and figures of speech. So the test in agreeing with what was seen, what was heard, and what was written by John will be the written word. That will be the test. To accept whatever John saw in that vision, or revelation, or images, or figures, will be the written word, again remember, which we have not preached. Which we have not preached. Which we have not accepted. He said you must as well bear with them. You may hold up yourself and sternly resist it. And remember Paul said, though we or an angel from heaven. Are you following? Remember Paul said those words. And so with those words we can now safely look at Revelation. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1. <clears throat> Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. This thing saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Next verse. I know thy works. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Now go back to verse 1 again. Unto the angel of the church at Ephesus, right? This thing saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his hand and walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. All right? Now, please pay attention. What brother John is seeing in the book of Revelation is things that were passed away. They are things that have already happened. The book of Revelation is a book written about things that have already happened. You didn't hear me. Things that have already happened. Give me Revelation 21 verse 1. And I saw a new heaven. Are you following? And a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth we are passed away. And there was no more sea. The word we are passed away means it had already happened or it was in existence. So what he saw and heard in the vision was already in existence. It was not futuristic. That's why he used the word passed away. Now verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city. Hmm. New Jerusalem. Coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I saw the holy city. And in his words, the holy city is the new heaven and earth. Now, if you observe, he uses the word Jerusalem. The word Jerusalem sometimes is used figuratively. The word Jerusalem, because we want to uncover that. Figuratively, Galatians 4.26. Let's see how it is used figuratively. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Which is the mother of us all. That's a figure. Alright, that's a figure, figuratively. Hebrews 12.22. Figurative use of the word Jerusalem. But you are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. That's figurative. The heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels. That's figurative. Now, secondly, the word Jerusalem sometimes is also used literally to describe a place. Mark 11, 1. Let's see the use of it literally. And where they, when they came nigh to Jerusalem, 
unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent it for two of his disciples. They came nigh to Jerusalem, a place, a literal place. Luke 2, 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Luke 2, 45. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. So Jerusalem as a metaphor and Jerusalem as a literal. That means anywhere you see Jerusalem, you must find out which Jerusalem, the figure or the literal. So when he says he saw the, the heavenly Jerusalem, look at it again with this understanding. Revelation 21 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, to understand that, John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. The phrase I go means to depart. It means or implies to go away or to take a journey. I go, I depart, I go away or I'm traveling. Look at verse 3 of John 14. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Please underline the word I go again. And if I go, the first one, I go. The second one, if I go, now John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do. Why? Because I go. If I go, I go. Because I go. Are you following? If I go and prepare a place, I go to prepare a place, because I go unto my father. So the reason for going away was for him to come again to them. He went to come. When I go, I will come back. So he went to come. Are you following? So that where he is, all of us will be. I go to prepare a place. And when I prepare a place, I will come back and receive you that where I am, there you may be also. Are you following? Now, John 14, 16 to 20. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Woo. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because he said him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be where? Huh? All right, next verse. 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will go, and I will come. But when I come, I am coming as a spirit to live in you. Am I teaching? All right. I will come to you. Next verse. Yet a little while, and the world see me no more, but you see me even when they are not seeing me. Because I live, you shall live also. Next verse. At that day you shall know. Nedela. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Batolaya. Zibodagaya. If you are still here, shout, I hear you. Now, look at verse 16 and 17 again. Pay attention. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. 17. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Because he seared him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he visited you. Divine visitation 2018. 
Have you seen those posters before? Divine visitation. He dwelleth in you. Why should I attend a program to hear about a person resident in me visiting me? Another gospel. So when a preacher says God will visit you, eh? another gospel. Why will God who lives in me visit me? If I'm teaching, say I hear you. So you see, another gospel is very subtle. I mean, what is wrong with a preacher saying God will visit you? It sounds like good news. But you must understand the facts of the gospel to be able to know that that is not the gospel. You see how, how epignosis is very critical? You, you, it's not... <clears throat> Let me tell you, it's not enough to hear me preach to you for 20 years. That is introduction. We need another 50 years. And I'm not joking. Because every day we keep teaching, your eyes keep opening. Is that true? That's why you can never say, I know it after all. Is it? Now, see, see the kind of things we are bringing up from the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation that people don't read. People just, people have used padlock to lock it. Whatever is inside, let it be there. As long as I have Jesus, I'm satisfied. Eh -eh. It's not enough. All scripture, all, all scripture, all. All right. So another gospel gives you a future, a futuristic hope. The gospel of Christ reveals to you what you already have. So when John says, "I saw a new Jerusalem," ah yeah, ah yeah, follow me, follow me. Are you following me? So in other words, look at John fourteen twenty three first before I give you other words. Jesus answered. And said unto him, if a man love me, hey, I love this one, honey. if a man love me, he will keep my words. That word, keep my words, means he will believe the gospel. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. We will make him our house. Zatona. All right, so the believer, therefore, is in an inseparable union with Christ. Inseparable. The believer is the abode of the Father. The believer is the house of the Father. In other words, the believer in Christ is the dwelling place of the Father. The believer in Christ, please pay attention, is the dwelling place of the Father. And this is what Jesus meant when he said, where I am, you will be also. Kabaya. Are you following? This is what Jesus meant. That the believer will be the house where the Father will live in. The believer. Okay? Now, when he said, I will come again to you. What he meant was resurrection. I will rise from the dead. And by my resurrection, you will be my dwelling place. John 4, 23. But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshippers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the father seeketh such to worship. What it means is, the place of the father's worship is the believer the believer is the place of the father's worship who is in an eternal union with the father the believer is in an eternal union with the father are you here so when jesus was talking to that woman at the well he clearly took her focus from a physical place called Jerusalem. He took our focus from the temple built for worship in Jerusalem to a spiritual reality. A spiritual reality. A spiritual dwelling or house which is the man in Christ. 
That new Jerusalem is the born again man. The man in Christ. So the phrase worship in spirit and in truth was in reference to a people. The father's household. The new creation. That's why you will hear Paul say, we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. What Paul is simply saying is, we are the, we are the house of God's worship. So the believer is the worship of God in spirit and truth. You didn't hear that. Even without singing, the born again man is a constant worship. Is the house where God dwells. The new creation. Hallelujah. I said the new creation. So the believer is God's temple. The believer is God's house. The believer is God's abode. The believer is God's dwelling place. First Corinthians 3 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? The believer is God's temple. First Corinthians 6 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. One spirit. Verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? Verse 20. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Therefore, the right hand of the Father is the believer. The believer is the right hand of the father. The believer is the right hand of the father. So the right hand of the father is inside the believer. Hiya. 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 Can you hear me? Citizens, can you hear me? Is it heavy? Are you able to carry it? When he says, I go, when the father said, come sit at my right hand. Come sit at my right hand. Where is the father's right hand? In the believer. Because the believer is God's house. It's called the household of faith. The believer is God's temple. I'm going somewhere. So here the writer of Hebrews. Hebrews 9, 23, 24. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with this. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than this. Verse 24. For Christ is not entered. You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. Are you hearing me? Somebody hearing me shall glory. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us to appear where in the presence of God for us this was not referring to a building in heaven like the building that was built by Moses hmm. let me ask you a question church the building of Moses, how many compartments did he have? Huh? Oh, power city. The tabernacle of Moses, the temple of Moses, how many divisions did he have? Three. Number one, outer place. Number two, holy place. Number three, holy of holies. How many compartments? You are spirit. Now, so the temple that Jesus entered it's not Moses's. It's not the temple built with hands. It's a spiritual temple. And the Bible calls you a spiritual house. So, where did Jesus enter? Eh? When he said he appeared in heaven for us. Where is heaven? 
The believer is God's heaven. I am my father will come into you and make you our abode. So the believer is God's heaven. If it's clear, say I hear you. Where does God live? Exactly. The believer is God's heaven. So Jesus, upon his resurrection, did not enter into a holy place made with hands. Rather, into heaven to appear in the presence of God for us. Can I hear your amen? So the question is, where did he offer his blood? Where did Jesus offer his blood? In Hebrews 9.23, the word purified. Look at it. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in heaven should be purified. Uh, Somebody is not seeing. Purified. No will purify. Purified with this. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Okay? Now, the word purified was taken from the Greek word katharizo. K-A-T-H-A-R-I-Z-O. Katharizo, which implies to cleanse out or wipe out. Katharizo, to purify, to cleanse out or wipe out. The writer of Hebrews also spoke about Jesus purging our sins. Purging our sins. In Hebrews 1.3. Purging our sins. When he had by himself purged if your Bible was mine, I would circle the word purge, the tense. Purge our sins. What did he do after purging our sins? Sat down. Sat down where? So, question, church, from what I taught you. When Jesus purged our sins, where did he sit? Inside us. Because the believer is the right hand of God. Or the right hand of God is in the believer. So, after he purged us, what did he do? He sat inside us. After he purified us, he sat inside us. He sits in the believer. Now, notice. First thing he did was to wipe out our sins. And then he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Which is where? In the believer. Hebrews 9, 13 to 14. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, watch, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So now he explains where Jesus offered his blood. Jesus, through the eternal spirit, offered his blood in our hearts. The blood was offered in our hearts. What is the mission of the blood? To purge our hearts. So where was the blood offered? In our hearts. He purged our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So in Hebrews 9.24, watch. 9.24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places married hands which are the figures of the truth but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god for us and that appearing in the presence of god for us was referring to the believer because the presence of god is in the believer so we do not come to the presence of god We did not come this morning to the presence of God. Father, we are gathered in your presence. No, we didn't come to his presence. We are his presence. So we came with his presence. You're not following me now. The believer is God's presence. Zatolaya. Egimananga. You're not hearing me this morning. You have to be alert in your heart to catch what I just thought. Zibataka. So the believer is God's dwelling place. Now watch. 
I'm wearing a suit, right? I'm wearing a suit, right? Is it a suit? Okay. If I walk before you with this suit, what is this suit? This suit is my presence. This suit I'm wearing is my presence. Why? Because it is with me. You can't see me without seeing it. Because I'm wearing it. So when you see this suit, what have you seen? You have seen me. It's like you say, I saw you. You are the one that took that chair. You say, I swear I'm not. You say, that shirt is the shirt that I saw. If you argue, I didn't see your face, but look at the picture from the back. Look at the shirt. Why? We have used the shirt to locate you. Because that shirt is you. So since we are God's house, it means you cannot see God without us. So we have automatically become the presence of God. So I do not seek his face. I am his face. If I'm teaching God, shout, I hear you. Now, religion can't take this. You must grow small to catch this. Say with me, I am God's presence. I am God. Remember, I am still trying to unravel the heavenly Jerusalem. And I'm trying to unravel the new heaven and the new earth. And I'm trying to unravel the bride of Christ. So that means the next service. I'll deal with the bride of Christ. I will deal with what is this new heaven and new earth. And what is this heavenly Jerusalem. But first of all, to deal with that, you have to understand that the believer is God's presence. So that's why we don't look for his presence. We have his presence. Somebody say, why do we pray? We pray so we can fellowship with him who is joined to us as one spirit. It's fellowship. Okay? And, and then somebody says, but, but, but if we are his presence, why don't we feel him? We don't have to feel. We don't have to feel. We don't feel. We know. We know. It is this teaching that gives you the feeling. When you understand what I'm teaching, the understanding will activate the feeling. If I'm teaching good this morning, shout, I hear you. Now stand on your feet and shout, I am the presence of God. I'm the house of God. Say, I am the right hand of the Father. That means when Jesus says, I go, then he say, I come. You didn't hear what I said. When Jesus said, I go, what did he say again? I come. And the next one, when he says, I come, where was he coming to? Coming to the believer. So he was going to come to the believer. The ultimate destination of God's plan, the ultimate destination of Jesus' travel is to arrive in you. In that day you will know that I am in you, you are in me, and the Father is in me. That means we will have an inseparable union. That is, I will never leave nor forsake you. I will abide with you forever. I will abide with you for how long? So when John saw the new Jerusalem, when John saw the heavenly city, when John saw the new heaven and earth, what was John seeing? Don't forget what I said in the beginning. That whatever John saw, whatever John saw has to be subjected to doctrine. So that's why I took us from Revelation and I came back to John because John wrote Revelation. So I took us from Revelation and I came back to the doctrinal positions of John. To unlock revelation. The epistles will interpret the revelations of brother John. See I hear you. And the good news this morning is you are God's presence. You are the right hand of the father. And you know what the right hand of the father is? Regency. You know the right hand of the father is the authority of the father. The right hand is not right hand for eating a bar. The right hand is the authority. The believer is the father's authority. Zapatolekeya. Somebody shout, I am the authority of the father. 
you know what we just said the father can do nothing without me so the father has to pass through me to exercise his authority i feel like i'm preaching this morning if you're catching my flow shout i hear you wave your hands and shout i am the authority of the father now say therefore satan cannot mess with me so you you see why i'm angry when believers are subjected to rolling on the floor in the name of deliverance it's making caricature of all that jesus suffered for all that jesus died for it's making caricature of the eternal purpose of god how can you take the presence of god and be rolling it on the floor you are rolling the authority of god on the floor no one i say men that are in authority and don't know they are like the animal that perish you carry god's presence and you roll on the floor i will uh, you know i was i changed the song demons tremble at 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 your presence I, I made them sing it somewhere and i told them to sing it demons tremble at my presence when we finished the pastor said are you trying are you trying to take god's god's glory from him i said where is god's glory where is god's glory i am god's glory i am god's presence i am the right hand of the father i am god's authority oh i am the dwelling place of the father i am my father will come inside you and we will make our abode in you somebody shout he's with me he's in me he's following through me in me with me through me and he says i will never leave nor forsake you so when your body is misbehaving tell your body hey 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 you can't do that in the presence of in the presence of god there is where's the presence so you should have joy all the time where is god's presence what is in god's presence fullness of joy and pleasures where where is his right hand so there should be pleasure you should be a man of pleasure and a man of fullness not partial joy fullness of joy every time people look at you they should see you smiling every time people see you they should see you happy why you are the presence of god honey you know what when you walk into a place your presence should lift the environment when you enter a place your entrance should change the things why god cannot enter a place and the place remains the same i feel like i'm preaching here see the problem is our minds have not been renewed to accept our reality our minds have not been renewed if you know what god has put in the believer hey, don't miss any of this teaching I beg you follow it through it may be a bit cumbersome in some places because it is painstaking because of the the nature in which the revelation came but we will unlock all of it and you'll be the better for it somebody's not shouting hallelujah lift your right hand so heaven i declare to you today by the finished work of christ enjoy the fullness of this revelation enjoy the fullness of god's glory enjoy the fullness of all that god is in the name of jesus i decree the remaining days of this week you will enjoy revelation knowledge grow in grace grow in knowledge abound unto all good things you are blessed beyond the cause you are kept by the power of god you are sustained by the grace of god what god has done in you will manifest in the days to come the reality of your identity will manifest in this day in the name of jesus lift your right hand and shout very loud i am what the word says i am i am god's house i am god's temple i am god's presence i'm the right hand of the father i am the dwelling place of god god does not visit me he lives in me i thought somebody would celebrate that reality glory welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back oh my goodness what a service i know you've been blessed by the word of his grace please don't go away don't go away the essence of the teaching of God's word is to build you up, equip you, so you can do the work of ministry. That's the whole essence. Not just to acquire knowledge and see that, but to teach you so you can teach others. Brother Paul says, the things that you have learned of me among many witnesses, the same you 
commit to others, who shall also commit to others. Two things. Number one, if you don't belong to a Bible teaching church where the message of Christ is taught, where the revelation of Jesus is brought to you, then you either join one of our campuses or you can begin one in your community and become the lighthouse for other believers to assemble around and be fed and be taught the word. And today you want to join either a campus of ours or you want to start a campus. All you need to do is shoot me a mail, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com with your details. We shall get in touch with you and we shall walk with you, equip you and train you. And we shall walk you through establishing a campus or being a part of one of our already existing campuses in your locality. Lastly, I've written a number of books to address doctrinal issues and to answer questions that you might have. They're on the screen right now. Today, if you require any of those books, you want to order for them or all of them, or you want to order for our CDs or DVDs, shoot a mail also to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com requesting for the materials and our office will get in touch with you and see how they can work out getting the books to wherever you are around the world. I'm excited that I'm able to be a blessing to you today. Remember, I'm live here on Facebook every morning at 10 a.m. GMT plus one, 12 noon GMT plus one, 6 p.m. GMT plus one, and 10 p.m. GMT plus one. Many times a day, feeding you, feeding you, feeding you, equipping you, because we want you to come to a place of robust understanding of an effective relationship between you and God. Share with other people as you look forward to continuing to be a blessing in your life. And until I see you in the next broadcast, enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Amen. Oh, man, see a bit